Hello and a very warm welcome to The Real Home Show, the show that helps make your dream home a reality, whatever your budget. Here's what's coming up. Paint ideas for living rooms, a beginner's guide to the different types of loft conversion, the best way to clean a microwave, plus we've got a brilliant George Foreman barbecue giveaway. wondering what happened to the Real Home Show studio, well, we swapped it for my dining room while we're all in isolation. Luckily for you, we've still got loads of great ideas for your home and garden, starting with these brilliant living room paint ideas. Our living rooms are not only where we spend most of our time, but also where we spend most of our hard-earned money. On average, after kitchens, we invest the most in our living rooms. And when you factor in the cost of sofas, furniture and entertainment, that makes sense. They're designed to last, so it's crucial that you paint your walls in a colour or colours that you'll love for a good few years and that will work with any furniture you plan to keep. Because we use our living rooms at all times of day, it's important to take into account the orientation of the room. Rooms that face north, south, east and west all receive different amounts of natural light, which will affect how they feel and which paint colours work best. If you don't know which way your living room window faces, get your house up on Google Maps and zoom out to find out. Rooms with windows that face north receive little bright sunlight and the light coming into the room will often feel cooler and darker. Even a north facing room with big windows can still appear quite dark. Contrary to popular belief, painting a north facing room white won't necessarily make it feel any lighter it's better to choose warm colours. You can still go for greys and even whites, but make sure the shades have a dose of pink or yellow to them. Dark rooms can also look great in a dark colour, creating a nice cocooning feeling. If your living room faces south, then lucky you. Rooms that receive plenty of direct sunlight throughout the day can be decorated with any colour. Cool shades such as blues, will work just as well as warmer ones like wine reds. The only colour to be wary of is brilliant white, as it can be almost blinding in a room that's south facing on a sunny day. Rooms that face east or west are particularly tricky as they spend half the day with plenty of natural light and the other half with very little. Consider when you use your living room the most and decorate accordingly. In east facing rooms, the evening light will be cooler so you might want to opt for darker shades to create that cocooning feeling we mentioned earlier. West facing rooms will warm up in the afternoon and evening, so embrace this with soft greens or pinks. Our living rooms are used a lot, but the walls themselves don't tend to get knocked as much as they do in say, hallways or kitchens. So the best paint to use is a matte emulsion. If you have young children or pets, you might want to opt for a washable paint so you can scrub any marks away. Now, if you're in desperate need of more space in your house but don't want to move, then converting your loft could be the perfect option. In the second part of our Loft Conversions Made Easy series, in association with Resi Architects, we've got this guide to the different types of loft conversion. You'll know your dormer from your hip to gable in no time. In the last episode, we explained how to work out whether it makes financial sense to convert your loft. If the answer for you was yes, then today it's time to look at which of the main types of loft conversion is right for you. Here are the four main types ranked in terms of complexity and cost, starting with the easiest and cheapest option. So firstly, you can turn an attic into a room just by adding roof lights such as V-Lux windows and then upgrading the structure and adding stairs, plumbing, electrics and insulation. This is usually the simplest, quickest and cheapest type of conversion as structural alterations are kept to a minimum. Roof lights are also the most straightforward way of bringing in plenty of natural light and allowing ventilation if to your loft conversion. So secondly, and the most popular type of alteration is a dormer loft conversion. Dormers not only give you the natural light of roof lights, but they add space to a loft conversion too. They're particularly effective where the pitch angle or slope of the roof is really high, as they can help to increase the usable floor space by adding head height. 
There are various types of dormer, the most popular of which is the standard box, which projects out with a flat roof. The part of the roof that's been extended has to be stripped and then the new structure built, which makes it more time consuming and expensive than just adding roof lights. So the third option is a hip to gable loft conversion and that's usually used for semi-detached houses or bungalows. So this is where the roof is sloped or hipped on the side as well as at the front and at the back. So that section of roof is stripped, the hip section is removed and the end wall is then built up to form a vertical gable with a standard pitch roof. So the work creates far greater area with headroom and roof lights are normally installed at the same time. The final and the most expensive option is a mansard roof, which is another type of dormer and is really popular in cities. Essentially, the whole of the roof structure is altered to create a far larger space with full headroom. A mansard conversion typically spans from gable wall to gable wall and is like another full story with almost a vertical tiled wall and then a flat roof on top. This results in an addition that may appear far more part of the property and less like an add-on. So if you're still not sure which of those four options is best for your house, architects like Resi are offering free online and remote design consultations at the moment to help you decide. Join me back here in two weeks time when I'll be explaining the costs involved in every type of loft conversion. Right, be honest now, when was the last time you properly cleaned your microwave? Well, here's my simple guide to getting it sparkling. Stick around for that barbecue giveaway. You'll be really pleased to know that cleaning even the grubbiest of microwaves is a really quick and easy job and that you don't need loads of cleaning products. Simply fill a microwavable bowl with 200ml of water and then add 2 tablespoons of white vinegar. Place a toothpick into the bowl to stop the water from boiling out over the edge. The bubbles will form on the wood so that the water can boil without exploding and then shut the door and run it on high for 5 minutes. When the timer goes off, don't open the microwave drawer straight away. Leave the door shut for about five more minutes to let the steam continue to work. It'll help loosen any caked on bits of food and the vinegar will help to eliminate any nasty odours too. When you do open the door, just be really careful pulling the bowl out because it'll still be really hot. And then make sure you remove the turntable tray, that'll be hot as well. Give it a wash in the sink with some warm soapy water or pop it in the dishwasher if it's dishwasher safe. Then use a sponge or a scouring pad to wipe down the inside of the microwave and the door and the ceiling and the dirt should come straight off. Then allow the whole thing to dry with the door open. This method will help a microwave that's a bit smelly to be much fresher too. Now I bulk buy my white vinegar from Amazon but if you don't have any then you can use a whole lemon, simply cut it in half, pop it in the bowl of water and use that instead. Happy cleaning! It's almost the end of the show, so it's time for our latest amazing competition. We've teamed up with George Foreman to give away six four-ring gas barbecues worth £180 each. To be in with a chance of winning, head to realhomes.com forward slash TV and answer this simple question. Which small appliance did we show you how to clean in this episode? You've got until midnight on May the 14th to enter, so good luck. I'll be back in two weeks' time with paint ideas for bathrooms, plus the real cost of converting your loft. Until then, check out realhomes.com forward slash TV for more on everything that we've talked about in this episode. And don't forget to add a copy of Real Homes magazine to your online shop. Happy homemaking.